after you probably saw my previous comparison video about the original Prusa MK3 as 3D printer and its clone version, in this video I will show you what do you get with the clone and what are the typical issues during the assembly process. With the help of this video you should be able to assemble your clone properly and get the best printing quality out of it with the parts which come with this kit. Let's play that intro! After just 4 days of order I got the package which was just enough time for me to print out the 3D printed parts because these are not included. After I opened the package quickly realized that the power supply is already assembled with the 3D printed cover so you do not need to print out these two parts. All the bed related parts are packed together, there are some captain tape, two sheets of PI printing surface and the bare spring steel sheet. You need to assemble them together yourself. How? I made a quick video about it also to get a bubble free perfect result. Check it out. The heat bed looks the same as the original one, just the magnet gluing is not that pretty. Another difference that the power cables are soldered decently onto the board, which makes a better contact as the original screwing solution. The stepper motors are packed well with the same direct axis slit screw design. The cable lengths are pre-cut and labeled. The front and rear plates are also here. And there is one box for the mechanical and another one for the electrical parts. And this would be the right place to find the front and rear plates in the package. The other frame parts are also moved around. Not that nice. This is how it should be. By the other two printers that I ordered later was the same. You can see that there is around 5 cm air gap which should be filled up to not let the parts move around. The steel rods and cable covers are packed well. And then the last two pieces are the bed carriage and the main frame part without the Prusa text. I checked if it's bent because of the packaging but it looks straight. The aluminium extrusions first look pretty dirty with some aluminium chips under the protective foil but after you peel it off it's clean. The screws are packed and labeled but not like the original Prusa assembly steps order just regarding their sizes. The assembly process is pretty easy, just one clap and finished. <laughs> no, just kidding. The square nuts are a little bit thicker than the European version, which caused some difficulty at the beginning to install them, but then later I realized that they are staying in place more firmly as the original ones that could fall out sometimes from their slots. As a test engineer I saw enough crazy things on the field to not blindly trust in pre-assembled electronics, especially the ones that came from China, so I opened the 3D printed button cover to check the power supply cable connections. They were all well crimped and connected in my case, but I would recommend to you to also give it a glance before you assemble your printer. You can find here also the power panic board, which helps you to continue your 3D print in case of a blackout. In the assembly manual there are 10mm long M3 screws originally to fasten the Z and bed moving stepper motors, but because of the slimmer cover plate design as the original ones, these screws are too long here. You need to file down around 2mm from their length, or just use an 8mm long screw if you have it around as I did it here also. The extruder comes in pieces and you need to assemble it together yourself. I show you here my method, so you have to be sure that the nozzle and the heat brake meets inside the heater block. First I screw the nozzle inside the heater block, fully by hand, and then I turn it backwards a little bit, holding in place, and install then the heat brake. After the heat brake turned inside, then comes the heat sink. And after that, I fasten the nozzle inside the heater block. Take care to not apply too much force to it, because you can damage the threads. This is just a preliminary assembly step. After the printer fully assembled and preheated, you have to retighten it with around 3 Nm torque. 
The temperature sensor and the heat cartridge also need to be screwed in place. The clone comes with a 50 watt heat cartridge while the original Prusa has a 40 watt version. This makes some differences that I showed you in my previous video. Another safety relevant difference is the heat brake. From the top they look the same, but if we check them from the bottom you can realize the difference. The original Prusa comes with a full metal heat brake, which literally means that it is full made of metal. On the other hand, the clone comes with a so-called 4.1 bore version, which means that it has a Teflon tube insert at the heated block side of it. This can cause problems if you are printing higher temperature filaments like PC, ABS, ASA, because the Teflon tube starts to degrade into toxic fumes on these temperatures. So if you plan to print these filaments, you should definitely purchase a full metal heat break for your clone kit. Thanks for Ole Urgast to point out this issue in his comment. There is a 1 meter long Teflon tube in the package, but it is not pre-cut for the hot end assembly, so you need to make it yourself. I have just used here a pencil sharpener to trim down one end and a drill bit to make a chamfer on the other end. After you install the Teflon tube, it has to have 11 mm extra length measured from the metal surface. In this way, it sits perfectly in the extruder body, close enough to the Bontec gears. There was no nylon filament in the package that is required for the extruder assembly cable management, but you can use the Teflon tube for this purpose. On the extruder side, I have just cut the head of a screw and screwed them together to hold it firmly. At the other end, I fixed it also with a screw. The pins on the LCD was too long and collided with the printed part. So I just took my plier and trimmed them down. And there are the bearings. What? One of them had even less balls than it should be. I have to say that these bearings are really bad quality ones. I assembled them now because I wanted to show how does the clone performs as it comes, but if you listen to me, then you should buy some decent bearings and install them from the beginning to spare some headaches later. And drum roll before the first start. Hmm, not good. What could happen? The fans do spin up, but no LCD activity at all. It caused me a little headache, but I could relatively quickly find out what's the problem. After I plugged the original Prusa screen on it, it worked well, so I checked again the assembly guide and the cable orientations, where I realized that the red cables are matching by the ANSI board but on the LCD side are the opposite direction. To be able to plug the cables into the right direction, the connectors should be soldered in the opposite direction. I just got a knife and cut the positioning pin down from the connector so I could plug it upside down and so the colors finally matched with the guide and voila! This solved the problem. <laughs> but take care. When I opened the other two printers that I ordered one week apart, I have just realized that they changed the cables. They still not match up with the original guide, but now if you take care from the beginning, you can install the cables with the right directions, however the cables are not symmetric regarding the colors. So if you plug first the wrong side into the LCD screen, then later you need to connect the cables also upside down into the NC board. Luckily the current is colorblind, so it will work like this also. I showed you all the flows that I made during my assembly process. I hope this video helps you to assemble your 3D printer without any problems. Because I would like to scale up my printing form and I'm satisfied with the first results of the clone, I also purchased two additional ones. My next project is to build up one printer with the IGES polymer bearings and another one with the Missimi Precision bearings. I will also assemble them with a Micro Swiss stainless steel heat break and a high speed steel nozzle. If you are curious about these builds also, then subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to get notified. If this video was useful for you, then give it a thumbs up. Till then, happy assembly and happy printing. See you next time.